Oh, there, come on. Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here, Peterson Electric. I got my safety glasses on and I got my gloves on. So I just want to give you a heads up on being more safe as I do my videos. Um, just to give you a heads up, this video for my SEO guys, September 20, and it's gonna be how to wire a toy hauler trailer uh, for 110 and 12 volt. Uh, we're keeping it kind of simple. Um, I'm wearing safety glasses and gloves here for now on. Somebody, some guy that I probably unsubscribed. I had a video nine years old. I've been doing videos for 10 years. I have over 800 videos and probably over 13,000 subscribers. And some guy decided to finally turn me into the state of Colorado for Dora because I didn't have gloves on when I touched a hot wire in a panel. Anyways, kind of question nowadays if people should even be watching videos or even be wiring if you're that scared of wires after I've been doing this myself for going on 24 years this fall. So if you're that scared of electricity and you're scared I'm going to kill myself, please unsubscribe from me. Do not watch me. And if I click on you so you can't watch me, don't go to your friend's house in his command center of his mother's basement and watch me. Anyways, moving on. This video is going to be about a trailer. Um, keeping it really simple, the guy that we corrected the wiring from, we didn't want to use the whole frame as a negative. Okay, I think it's a good backup. But I did pull a two wire, very small, probably close to about an 18 gauge wire in here. Okay, we pulled that through, I identified the blue as we went through, and we did red. We just put in some LED lights. We're going to put in a couple. He's going to wire a fan. It's basically ran two separate legs all the way through and used these really good attachments. This was uh, Russ's ID here that I'm wiring for. I like it. Screw into it and then zip tie it. Awesome idea. Okay. He's going to go ahead and put sheet metal over all this and get that sealed in, but our lights will stab down. And he's got a nice plate here. So as that comes down into here, our wiring will go down here, and I'll explain that in a minute. And then we had a piece of conduit to make it just look nice there. And then we ran our uh, 120 volts all the way through. I did use MC cable because it's exposed to physical damage as far as, I know it's not less, it's less than eight foot, but in this trailer, he's gonna butt most of this up and cut around so he has a little bit to come through, okay? Or he can put it on top, it's up to him. But I prefer MC cable one for mice and two, just because Romex gets nicked, this is really a good way to do it in my opinion. We did side mount bracket boxes. He wanted all the boxes up. He didn't want anything down low. Okay, so over here, just a simple plug from Home Depot, twist in, good way to check circuits, good way to have light easy loads in and out. This is a coax cable. He'll drill this or drill it, whatever. It's long enough to go out for his satellite. This power right here, go ahead and look that way, Russ. We can switch it, okay? So it's a four wire. It's a black, right here, a black, red, white, and a blue, and a green. So plus green is a five wire coming this way. We had a black wire doing the lights coming backwards on the blue for all my switch leg and the neutral ties through, but then we got two circuits. So right here, I have a circuit that's GFCI protected. So this is its own dedicated circuit for these three outlets right here, okay? And then the other one's a black circuit. I only have four circuits that are 110 in this RV. And then he can turn these off individually if he doesn't want it on at night. The coax comes back over here from the satellite to go to his TV. The TV will sit here or mount here. Right here we have the same circuit as this circuit for the black, for this. And this will probably be most likely a coffee pot. And this down here is a dedicated circuit or not dedicated, that's going to be up here off of this kitchen counter. And it is GFI because it is near a sink. Okay, so it still applies to Article 210.8 in the code book. He's got himself a little hot water heater, 1300 watts, about 11 amp. That little refrigerator he's putting in here is 1 amp. Coming across here, we have another circuit, two circuits coming up. So I've got four circuits in this place. 
This is one separate circuit, GFI protected, goes with that light. This one's a hot water heater. Hot water heater is dedicated. It's a switch receptacle here. This was a four wire going down. The blue was for the switched receptacle. The black and the red are two separate circuits, one for the microwave and another one for charging phones or maybe his coffee pot. Switch receptacle for the, the hot water heater. Here is the 12 volt pump. You can see it and hear it kick on. Okay, that is gonna be for his pump to turn on his water. Now, coming in here, coming down through, we have a negative and a positive from the fuses. Positive comes up to the bar. We actually could come up with a couple more circuits we didn't need to. Came back down, and that is what is giving us power and to our uh, pump. So positive came in and did a switch loop. All right, I went red in here, red up to that switch, 12 volt, came back down on the black, and that went to the negative. And then we did have this grounded here for the negative for the common, so it's the same as here. But it comes in here negative as well. And then we just tied in the lights. And the lights right here are the red and the blue. And I identified the red and blue as we went around. Then in here, the yellow is a thicker gauge 14 for that pump because it pulls more. We didn't use that small 18, we beefed it up to a 14. And so that yellow jacket comes right in here. That was kind of an afterthought and I found this four gang box. Those are kind of special order with a mud ring of five eighths inch rise. Now there is plastic bushings up here on both sides of this conduit to protect the wire. So basically power comes in here at 30 amps with the seal tight flex. And that then comes into this 4-8 circuit Siemens panel. I have a common tie because I do share a neutral. I ran 12-3 out of here twice, so I share a neutral, so I have to common tie. And as power comes into here, that's 120, and here to here is 240. But from my neutral to here and here to here is going to be 120 each. So if that makes sense to you guys, why do I have my neutrals and grounds tied together? Technically, this is my first point of disconnect for the RV. If I don't include the twist lock we're about to show you. So technically, the ground and neutrals will tie together anyways. But the generator is what is really doing the grounding, and you're supposed to, to ground your generator. Okay. But as, as it goes, I wish this would have been a little bit cleaner, but some of these wires were already ran, so I kind of ran with what I had to do, because we had, um, he ended up uh, using us instead of another guy so we could fix it right. But I chose MC cable also because of mice. I think it's just a better way to go. You've got to have your bushing anti-shorts inside of all your MC flex, but it is flexible as it drives down the road, and it'll be a great way for him to use. It's all 12 gauge as well. Okay, guys, so let's go outside here. It's going to be a little noisy. So you can kind of see the overview of the whole trailer. It's going to have a lot of 12 volt lights. One, two, three, four, five. And then if he's not running the generator to keep the noise down, well, then he'll have all of his one, two, three, four lights for his 110 if he's running that. Let's go out here. So this is what I kind of had to work with when I got here. But this I identified as a 12 volt for the frame, the negative on the battery, and the positive. And so as that comes in underneath, it says what it is. And then over here is gonna be our twist lock. So I can twist lock and take power off. And right here is gonna be our twist lock. It's not a belt cover. So we're gonna get him a two gang belt cover to use. But he's thinking about building a box around this so the mud flap, which is a good idea, the water doesn't spray as he drives down the road. Again, when I got here, this was already here. I think I would have done something different if I got here at the beginning of this and put a big PVC box. 
and then he could take off a cover and then twist on his uh, his twist lock. So right here. Large generator on this. This is a 6500, a Predator. Now the only thing is, when you run the generator this way, it is technically when you run it, this is hot. You have an X, Y, and a Z, and so you're going to have 240, 120 with a neutral to 120 to ground. So you got to be careful when you turn the generator on. This is hot automatically. So you really need to plug this in first, then this, then turn the generator on. Keep that in mind. Um, other than that, if you don't like that way, because he kind of did that himself, you could go to an RV shop, and I'm sure they would have a way to reverse that at an RV shop, so that way you had a female. But then that means that this sticking out here would be a male side. Okay? So that's going to be probably more than something at an RV place. Um, other than that, guys, it's kind of a general way to run it underneath here. You can see all this is seal tight. It's kind of hard to see, but there's car flex seal tight underneath there to give you an idea how that was sealed off and then drilled in through underneath 